Hi there, welcome to iQuantas channel dedicated to your success. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon so that you start getting all the notifications. And today I have brought for you passage 4. So you and I have been working together on these passages now. Still early days, but the goal is to ensure that you approach the passage the way I approach it and you start ruling out options the way I rule them out. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Uh, by now, you know the method or the pattern that we follow. You go through the passage and attempt the questions by yourself and then I will dive in and we'll work on it together. So let's go. So pause the video, read this and then we will proceed further. Next. 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 Okay, so now that you're done with the passage, let us go ahead and dive into our questions. So here is the first one. So I hope you've paused and answered this question because if you have, then let me take you over to the next one. So that's your question number two. There's some reflection. Let me just kill that. Hmm. Answered it. Okay, next. All right. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into the last question. Pause, answer, and then let's discuss. Ready? So, starting with reading the passage together. The second hand September campaign. I really love it. You know, the moment you see all these capital letters, you know that you're talking about a proper noun. So, it's the name of a campaign led by Oxfam. Name seeks to encourage shopping at local organizations and charities as alternatives to fast fashion brands such as Primark and Boohoo in the name of saving our planet. Okay, so I see one term here. What do you understand by fast fashion? What does that really stand for? So fast fashion would typically describe clothing which is low cost but stylish. Uh, but stylish, huh? So. Uh, organizations that go in for fast fashion uh, would probably not look at it as just clothes. Okay, So fast fashion can be thought of as a design, manufacturing and marketing method through which an organization tries to produce trendy clothing which is inexpensive because it is made of synthetic material, uh, materials that do not last for long but then they keep updating their collection very rapidly. In fact, I know of some of these fast fashion brands that think of the entire year as 52 micro seasons where they try to come up with one design every week. So they flood the market. And because these clothes are cheap, the consumers also end up buying them very regularly, but then they don't last long, so you discard them. And because they are inexpensive, it at times encourages people to buy more clothes than what was really needed or necessary, right? So as a result, they go ahead and have these uh, harmful effects on the environment and also on the consumers themselves in the long run. So that is why, you know, the second and September campaign seeks to encourage shopping at local organizations and charities as alternatives to fast fashion brands in the name of saving our planet. But the moment I see this, you know, in the name of saving, this somehow tells me that the author is not entirely positive about this campaign. Otherwise, you know, in the name of is generally used when uh, you doubt that entity. So as innocent as, as mindless scrolling through online shops may seem, such consumers are unintentionally or perhaps even knowingly contributing to an industry that uses more energy than aviation. Oh my God, look at that. Okay. 
So the people who shop are contributing to uh, an industry which is environmentally unfriendly to a large degree. Okay, the next Brits buy more garments, Britishers buy more garments than any other country in Europe. So it comes as no shock that many of those clothes end up in UK landfills each year. So landfill is an area where your waste products, your discarded materials eventually go. Uh, 300,000 tons of them to be exact. This waste of clothing is destructive to our planet, releasing greenhouse gases as clothes are burnt as well as bleeding toxins and dyes into the surrounding soil and water. So when you say bleeding toxins and dyes, they slowly release these in their surroundings in the soil and water. Uh, as ecologist Chelsea Roshman bluntly put it, the mismanagement of our waste has even come back to haunt us on our dinner plate. So because it has get gotten into the soil and water as well. So encouraging people to buy something which is environmentally friendly uh, as opposed to picking up fast fashion brands. Then a tendency of Britishers to buy a lot of clothes that lead to a lot of clothes related waste being produced which is affecting the environment and even our dinner plate. Then it is not surprising then that people are scrambling for a solution. So now that the previous two paragraphs have set the stage, you think people are looking for a solution, but no ready solutions are available. So when you scramble for something, you just go ahead and move towards it in a very haphazard manner and you don't have much of a clarity. The most common solution is secondhand shopping. So retailers sell, selling consigned clothing. Okay, so consigned clothing is basically secondhand clothing. So there are these secondhand stores. Uh, so what these stores do is that, let's say I want to sell this t-shirt. So I'll go there and give my t-shirt to them and say, hey, why don't you sell it to someone? Now, when that t-shirt is sold, it is sold, but until then it remains my property. Huh. So it's second and is in the sense that the actual owner leaves his clothes there. There is no exchange happens at this juncture. It's only when it is sold to a final consumer that the monetary transactions happen. So that such clothing is called consigned clothing. So retailers selling consigned clothing are currently expanding at a rapid rate. If everyone bought just one used item in a year, it would save 449 million pounds of waste equivalent to the weight of 1 million polar bears, man. Thrifting has increasingly become a trendy practice. So thrifting basically is the practice of buying secondhand clothes at attractive price points, you know, low price points, because it's not new, of course. So it has increasingly become a trendy practice, fashionable. London is home to many secondhand or more commonly coined vintage shops across the city from Bayswater to Brixton. So this vintage here is going to be a euphemism basically. So, so you are cool and you care about the planet. You've killed two birds with one stone. So if you buy this, if you thrift, if you buy consigned clothing, if you uh, patronage uh, vintage stores, then you are cool and you care about the planet. You've killed two birds with one stone, you know, cool as well as caring for the planet. But do people simply purchase a secondhand item Flash, in or flash it on Instagram with hashtag vintage and call it a day without considering whether what they are doing is actually effective. So people buy it, but do they pause and think whether buying those secondhand or consigned clothes is actually effective for the planet, I presume? That indicates some kind of shift. So according to a study commissioned by Patagonia, for instance, older clothes shed more microfibers. These can end up in our rivers and seas after just one wash due to the worn material. So the material is already not in a great condition. It is worn, right? It is used. So they shed microfibers which can pollute it. To break it down, the amount of microfibers released by laundering 100,000 fleece jackets, laundering is washing. Uh, is equivalent to as many as 11,900 plastic grocery bags and up to 40% of that ends up in our oceans. So where does this leave second-hand consumers? Ah, so what this now basically means is that okay, these guys were buying it because it was cheap and they were also trying to protect the environment but these old clothes are not protecting the environment necessarily. So what should they do now? They would be well advised to buy high quality items that shed less and last longer as this combats, as this fights 
both microfiber pollution and excess garments ending up in landfills. So even older garments can have some problems. Here is a solution when buying those secondhand clothes. Luxury brands would rather not circulate their latest season stock around the globe to be sold at a cheaper price. Understandable. Uh, exclusivity, which is why companies like ThreadUp, a US fa uh, fashion resale marketplace, have not yet caught on in the UK. There will always be a market for consignment, secondhand clothes, but there is also a whole generation of people who have been taught that only buying new products is the norm. So, look, notice this attitude that you need to buy only new products. Uh, second-hand luxury goods are not in their psyche, so they don't even think of buying second-hand products. Ben Whitaker, director at liquidation firm B Stock, liquidation firm, maybe an, so liquidation is when an organization goes out of business and it is sold for its assets. Uh, maybe there are these are firms which specialize in that. Who knows? Uh, director at liquidation firm B Stock told Prospect, another organization. Look at the capital P. Uh, that unless recycling becomes cost effective and filters into mass production with the right technology to partner it, high-end retailers would rather put up brands before sustainability. So unless this happens, recycling becomes cost effective. So uh, and filters into mass production that okay, most of the things that are produced are now recycled with the right technology to partner it, high-end retailers would rather put brand before sustainability. So this basically focuses on these high-end brands and what they do. Okay, so that's our passage. Here is your question number one. The central idea of the passage would be undermined if. So first up, we need to know the central idea of the passage. So the central idea is that fast fashion clothing is affecting the environment. One popular solution is secondhand clothing, which also has some problems, environmental problems. And therefore, if you are looking at uh, secondhand clothes, make sure that you buy things which are high quality and long lasting. Plus, last paragraph hints at high end brands and why they don't go that route. Uh, now, we want to undermine it. Now, we know that undermine basically means to weaken. So, in order to support his ideas, the author must have given us some reasons and must have used some assumptions. So, how do we go on to weaken? We weaken by questioning those reasons or those assumptions. So let us check which answer choice does that. Primark and Boohoo recycle their clothes for vintage stores. Okay, what if these guys start selling their clothes at secondhand shops? What will happen? Which clothes are these? These are fast fashion products, right? Which means that the clothes are not of high quality. So uh, if their clothes start getting to these second-hand stores, it means that the second-hand stores will be selling stuff which is low quality. Now, does that contradict the passage? No. In the passage, the author himself goes on to tell us that, hey, a lot of people who buy these clothes, you know, they end up polluting because worn clothes, microfibers, shedding. So all those problems will exist. So this goes on to support the author's argument. If such low quality products get into the circulation again, even the second hand clothes will end up polluting. So that strengthens and not weakens. So we can eliminate it. Okay, customers bought all their clothes online. How is it related to the central argument? Whether you're buying them online or offline, it does not even matter. In fact, in the very first paragraph, the author has associated the uh, online with that mindless scrolling. Ah, so he says that if because of that, you know, all these fast fashion brands, etc., they sell online. If you're doing it, chances are that you'd end up supporting what the author actually goes on to say. So you'd not be weakening, you'd actually, uh, it's either going to be irrelevant or you may end up strengthening the passage. So even this can be eliminated. See, second hand stores sold only high quality clothes. Okay, now because of this only, now notice at one particular place the author has devoted an entire paragraph to the fact that even second-hand clothes have a problem, fourth paragraph basically. Uh, but if the second-hand stores sold only high-quality clothes, then that fact introduced by the author 
after which there was a suggestion to buy high quality clothing that lasts for long that entire paragraph falls apart if this only bit is true so this definitely weakens that particular argument that is made by the author so it may not impact the entire argument that is built but definitely impacts a part of it so let's keep it in running d clothes were not thrown and burnt in land landfill so if this is true that they're not discarded will the central idea be undermined that fast fashion brands are harmful See, they're harmful at multiple levels. Disposing of those clothes is just one aspect. Even producing them requires resources. Remember the very first paragraph where they said that this is a segment that uses more energy than aviation. So, the damage has happened at the level of production itself. Ah, then the damage has happened at the level of the at the level of uh, consumers buying more things than what they probably required because it was low cost. You know, a lot of people engage in retail therapy, no? So this is not the only problem with them. Had that been the only problem, then yes, it will undermine it. But uh, because it's not the only problem uh, that is caused by them, it does not really go on to weaken what the author says so even this can be eliminated so the best answer choice here will be c so you notice there are times when the perfect option may not even be there in your uh, options so that's how it is so you just need to go ahead and pick up the best answer choice okay then next question the act of thrifting as described in the passage can be considered ironic because it so thrifting second hand clothes for cheap what is ironic something is called ironic when it leads to the opposite impact the opposite effect right for example i saw this image of a person with a tattoo and the tattoo said now the person wanted to get a tattoo with the tattoo said too cool for school now in his tattoo i'll just write it it was written so this bugger forget to add a c here in school so too cool for shul school became shul and that led to an opposite impact this in fact goes on to prove that hey you needed that education because you can't even spell a simple word right so that's ironic so why do people thrift because they save money and they protect the environment it would be ironic if what happens is the opposite where you either do not save money or you do not protect the environment so let's see they have created environmental problems yes that can be ironic uh, it is an anti-consumerist attitude irrelevant from the perspective of irony is not cost effective for retailers ah it is not about retailers it is about the thrifters people who've bought them if they don't find it cost effective then it would be ironic for them whether it is cost effective for retailers or not is immaterial is irrelevant for this then d offers luxury clothing at cut rate prices but that's not the irony that's the benefit irony is that opposite happening this is uh, what is supposed to happen and therefore you can rule out this as well so the best answer that you have here is option a. and with that let's dive into our next question question number three so based on the passage we can infer that the opposite of fast fashion slow fashion would most likely refer to clothes that so what exactly is fast fashion what are the characteristics so fast fashion is inexpensive fast fashion is low quality fast fashion is something where because of uh, its low quality it is something that does not sorry should have been a space here uh, last for long right uh, produces a lot of 
trendy designs week after week or at a rather short pace uh, produces high volume those are the kind of things that you dissociate so slow fashion is opposite so can be expensive high quality lasts long uh, you won't find very many new designs coming out at a rather short span of time so those are the kind of characteristics that we are looking for so let's start a they do not shed microfibers which is in a way saying that they are high quality so yes this can be slow fashion they are of high quality and long lasting oh so a merely said high quality indirectly here we are being told high quality directly plus long lasting so b becomes better than a let's rule it out and now keep this in running c they are sold by genuine vintage stores immaterial right these that's not a property of the fast fashion no that they are uh, stored uh, that they are not sold at genuine vintage stores that's not a property linked with them so this is going to be irrelevant they do not bleed toxins and dyes high quality right but then uh, we already have this in B plus B also says they're long lasting. So B still remains better than D and that is why we'd go ahead and mark B as our answer. Here is the next one. Question number four. According to the author, companies like ThreadUp have not caught on in the UK for all of the following reasons except that. So remember the last paragraph that is where these things were mentioned. So recycling is currently not financially attractive. The last part of the last paragraph. So this is mentioned. We are looking for something which is not mentioned. Okay, B. Luxury brands do not like their products to be devalued. Yes, once again mentioned in the last paragraph. The British do not buy second-hand clothing. Here, this contradicts the last paragraph. The last paragraph says the consignment is there to stay. People do buy second-hand clothes. So, so to say that they do not buy second-hand clothing because it contradicts it, it obviously is not going to be a reason that is cited. So this can be your answer. D, luxury brands want to maintain their brand image. Well, that's again something that is present in the last paragraph. So A, B and D are all mentioned as reasons in the last paragraph. So we can rule them out. C is not mentioned. In fact, C goes on to contradict what is mentioned and therefore that should be our answer. Uh, so that takes care of this particular passage and here is something for you to ponder over, something for you to think. So you are competing against yourself. Just make sure that you become better day after day, week after week. And hey, an easy way of doing that will be to work with me on this channel. So subscribe and if you enjoyed our discussion, our time together, uh, the like button as well. That's it from me for this particular session. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe, stay focused and stay in touch. Take care.